Hey, last episode we prepared a quick and easy meal that was a great source of protein for those of you who are looking to build that lean muscle mass. But let's take a step back today and talk about exactly what is protein and how our body uses it in order to properly function. Well, Webster's Dictionary defines protein as any naturally occurring substance that, uh, wait, fuck. any naturally occurring substance that maintains, <clears throat> uh, you can go ahead and go. Any naturally occurring substance that maintain a strong, uh, strong, yeah. Uh, any numerous, wait, how, let me just get that right there. Uh, any numerous naturally occurring, extremely complex substance, the enzymes or antibodies that consist of amino acid residues that join together peptide containing elements that has phosphorus or iron that is a central constituent of all living cells that synthesize from raw materials that plants assimilate but assimilate from separate amino acids and now something else and that. Okay, that's a great definition of what protein is. But what does that really mean for us in the fitness world? Well, protein can be simply put as one of the three macronutrients our body needs for energy. The other two being fats and carbs. So, now that we have a working definition of what protein is, let's go ahead and start up today's episode. I'm your host, Bruce Williams, and this is Science Fitness. Let's go. Okay, so today we're discussing what protein is and how our body really uses it in order to properly function. Well, protein has several functions within the human body. Some include enzymes, which are biochemical catalysts, while others are used to bind molecules for storage and transport, such as myoglobin and hemoglobin. But that's good and all, but how does that help for those of you that are in the fitness world? Well, protein can promote muscle growth with the correct resistance training, and increase in protein, you can build that lean muscle mass. Protein also acts as a thermogenic because it takes energy to break down that protein. This in turn increases your metabolism and aids in fat loss. But to truly understand this macromolecule, we need to break down the building blocks of protein. Amino acids. So now we're going to go ahead and talk about exactly what amino acids are. But before that, let's go ahead and look at the structure of the amino acid. It consists of an alpha carbon, which on one side is attached to an amino group. On the other, it's a carboxyl group. It's also attached to a hydrogen and some type of R group. Now this R group basically gives the amino acid its own personal characteristics. For example, you have some R groups that are hydrophobic in nature while others are hydrophilic. Okay, now that we have the basic structure of the amino acid, let's go ahead and break the amino acid up into two categories. You have essential and non-essential. Now the essential amino acids must be consumed through diet while the non-essentials are developed within the human body. Some complete sources of protein have all the essential amino acids needed while incomplete sources that are seen like in vegetables do not. So with that said, let's look at a chart that breaks down the essential and non-essential amino acids. Okay, let's start with the essential amino acids first. You have arginine, histidine, isoleucine, leucine, lysine, methylthionine, phenylalanine, threonine, tryptophan, and valine. Next, let's look at the non-essential amino acids. They consist of adeline, asparagine, aspartic acid, cysteine, glutamic acid, glutamine, glycine, proline, serine, and tyrosine. Now let's go. 
Okay, now that we looked at the essential and non-essential amino acids, let's go ahead and look and see how these amino acids join together to form protein. Okay, now we're gonna look at the protein structure levels. We'll first start with the primary structure, followed by the secondary structure, then we'll move on to the tertiary structure, and last but not least, we'll look at the quaternary structure. Let's go. Okay, the primary structure is a linear sequence of amino acids held together by peptide bonds. Let's go ahead and check out an example of peptide bonds and how it's formed. Okay, this is an example of amino acid peptide bond. We have amino acid one located here. It's followed by amino acid two located right there. Now this is a condensation reaction due to the fact that there's a loss of water after the reaction occurs. So when the reaction occurs, we will lose an H2O molecule. With the loss of this H2O molecule, we form this peptide bond. Now the peptide bond connects the alpha carboxyl group of one amino acid to the other amino alpha group of the other amino acid. And this forms the peptide bond between two amino acids. Okay, now that we looked at the primary structure, let's go ahead and break down the secondary structure. Secondary structures are more complex than the primary structures, and they're held together by the hydrogen bonding between amino acids. Majority of secondary structures consist of alpha helices as well as beta sheets and strands. The secondary structure offers a whole new level of flexibility and strength to the overall protein molecule. Now the next level to the amino acid sequence is the tetrary structure. The tetrary structure is made up of multiple alpha helices as well as beta sheets and strands. Well, the tetrary structure creates this type of 3D molecule which is stabilized by different types of interactions which include ionic attraction, hydrophobic effect, hydrogen bonding, as well as disulfide bonding. Okay, the last level we'll talk about is the quaternary structure. Now the quaternary structure is made up of multiple subunits of protein. Like the tetrary structure, the quaternary structure is stabilized through non-covalent interactions. An example of a quaternary structure could be myoglobin and hemoglobin. Okay, now let's talk about protein and diet. Statistics show that about 70% of all Americans consume their protein through animal intake. Now, a drawback to this is that when you consume animal protein, you also increase saturated fat as well as cholesterol levels. Okay, now plant protein, although it's an incomplete source of protein, if you combine the right sources together, you will be able to get all essential amino acids needed. Like other energy yielding nutrients, protein has a daily recommended value. The recommended value for most individuals is 0.8 to 0.9 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. So now let's check out a chart that breaks down the daily recommended protein intake depending on your physical activity. Okay, let's go ahead and check out the protein consumption guidelines. It ranges from sedentary individuals who need about a 0.8 to 0.9 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight, all the way down to bodybuilders who need about a 1.6 to 2.0 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. Now I also want to add that increased levels higher than the recommended dosage of protein needed can cause adverse effects. Some can include renal complications. All right, now let's jump into different types of protein supplements. Okay, now protein supplements are basically nutrient sources which increase your daily protein intake. They help and aid bodybuilders and weightlifters in increasing their protein. They come in forms such as protein bars, protein shakes, and also meal replacements. Okay, now there are different types of protein. The first protein we'll talk about is whey protein. Now whey protein is gonna be a fast absorbing protein, so if you take whey protein, you wanna take it an hour before or after a workout. There are three different types of whey protein. There's isolate, blend, and concentrated. Now isolate is basically a more expensive form of this whey protein due to the fact there is less lactose and fat in the isolate protein. Okay, the second type we're gonna be talking about is the concentrated whey protein. Now the concentrated whey protein is the least expensive out of the three due to the fact you have increased fat and lactose per serving. 
Okay, the third type of whey protein that we're gonna talk about is the blended whey protein. It's basically a mid-grade between the isolate and the concentrated whey protein. Okay, the next protein we'll be talking about is casein protein. Casein protein is the highest percentage of protein found in milk. Now casein protein releases a lot slower than whey protein and it's not an ideal consumption for post-workout. Casein protein is used by the body to build muscles. It also encourages the body to use carbs and stored fat for energy. Casein is also seen in the popular bodybuilding supplement glutamine. Now glutamine is a non-essential amino acid that aids in the recovery and rebuilding of muscles. Last source of protein that we're going to talk about is soy protein. Now soy protein, even though it's a high quality source of protein, it's not as efficient as casein and whey protein. Okay, the last supplement that we're going to be talking about is BCAA. Now branch chain amino acids are essential amino acids that must be consumed through the diet. They include valine, isoleucine, and leucine. Now the important part of these BCAAs is that they help in muscle remodeling as well as functioning in the muscle cells. Okay, now that we discussed what protein is and how our body uses it, let's do a quick review. Well, I hope you chose answer B, whey protein. This is the best type of protein for consumption an hour before or an hour after a workout. Okay, this pretty much concludes our video. I hope you're ready to take something from it. And oh yeah, please like, comment, and subscribe below. I'm your host, Bruce Williams, and this is Science Fitness. Let's go.